Good Saturday morning, my friends. I pray that everybody's doing fine. Um, we'll continue in, in our journey. Day six. No, I'm sorry. Today is day seven. Day seven of our 50-day journey. Um, today is Saturday, April 15th of the year 2023. So uh, we're on our way in our journey and we've shared we've prayed for different situations uh we've pr prayed for the church we prayed for leaders we've prayed for israel and we continue to pray for those things um but today's prayer i want to make a short one hopefully and i'm just going to read two uh verse uh, verses from two sections in scripture which is short um but first i want to say that uh, um for those of you who are out there and are watching this video, um, I want you to know that it's not a coincidence um, that you didn't stumble upon this video. I, I truly believe that the Lord has led you to this video um, because he has a message for you through this video. Um, and I don't want to... Christians use the term, those who are lost. I don't like that. I don't like that term. I mean... I understand how we use it, but I don't like it um, because when something's lost, you know, it's 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 really to me, it's like really horrible. I, I just want to say I, I consider people who don't know the Lord those who are not awakened yet to His truth. So, if you're curious and you're seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ, um, this prayer and these verses that I'm going to read is for you and for my brothers and sisters out there who have a relationship with the Lord. Um, I pray that this will also help you and encourage you to share this with, uh, you know, loved ones, uh, people who you know who don't have a relationship with the Lord. So um, that's our job. Our job is to let others know about the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, what he's done for us and, and what he, he'll continue to do for us until he calls us home. So um, I want to read real quickly from uh, John. Uh, probably the most familiar passage in all scripture, even the, the secular world, even those who don't know the Lord know this these verses. So I'm going to read from John 3. I'm going to read from verse 16 down to 20. Um, most people only read verse 16 and they stop there. Um, but we, we're reminded in scripture we should always read verses before and verses after so that we can get a full understanding in, uh, in context of those of that particular verse. So in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's where people usually stop. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light, being Jesus Christ, the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because, of their, de because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. I want to uh, stop there, and that's where we finish this reading in uh, John. Um, people who are, are doing things that they really shouldn't be doing, whether you call it evil or not, sinful or not, whatever, they're doing something that weighs heavily on their conscience, something that goes against the Word of God, goes against their own instinct, per, per se. Um, you know, they don't like to hear the truth because the truth offends, but more importantly, the truth convicts. You know, so you see it in the world today, how how um, the world is so quick to knock those down who are speaking the truth because they're being offended or being convicted of the things that they are doing. So um, if you uh, don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you feel that some things are convicting you, it's the Lord speaking to you. He's pulling at your heart, you know, he's pulling at those strings of your heart and, and just trying to draw you to him to show you, you know, how you should live. Um, so anyway, so uh, that ends in the, the reading in John. And then I want to read for those of you who don't know Jesus Christ, don't have a relationship with him. You know, you say, well, how can I have a relationship with Jesus Christ? There are a million different, I mean, not a million different ways. There's only one way, but there's a million different scriptural verses that I can read to you. But I'm just going to um, read from uh, Romans. Romans chapter 10, 9 through verses 9 and 10 says... That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So all you have to do is um, just confess Jesus Christ, who he is, um, the Son of God, that he was crucified for your sins, that he was buried and raised on the third day, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. And confess your sins and ask for, you know, repent of your sins and ask for forgiveness. And once you do that, you'll start seeing a change in you and, and a transformation that the Lord will do in you and how your walk starts with the Lord. Um, so I know, as, as, even as I believe it sometimes, I have to say, um, I mentioned this once or twice to uh, my pastor, that how can a person who doesn't believe confess of someone he doesn't believe in or she doesn't believe in? That's a, you know, it's a quagmire there, you know, it's a, you know, you're like, wow, how can I expect or ask somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ to confess that he believes in Jesus Christ? Well, um, I hope to post a video on that soon, if not today, maybe tomorrow on, on, on that topic, like how can you believe in somebody that right now you don't believe in? So it's, you know, it's, so anyway, so just, uh, just be patient with him. You know, the Lord is patient. He's very very patient with us thank god he is so uh with that i want to end uh the reading and i want to go into prayer um again if you have any prayer requests that you want to submit just put them in the comment section i'll write them down on the list that i've been you know that i have here it's not too long yet but i i know it'll grow um so i want to first read out the prayer requests of those who have submitted them to me and i pray that you would lead up, uh, lift them up in your prayers also um, assist on the Lord send a prayer request for the people of Turkey and Syria her family members and all the earthquake victims of the thousands and thousands who have died uh, watchman Adam he's a brother in the Lord he has a YouTube channel he's going through a uh, mighty mighty struggle a trial um, he's being tested right now um, as a matter of fact I got to see if he has any updates on his videos um, I want to lift him up that the Lord will strengthen him through what he's going through. Um, Ashley M, uh, she's asking for deliverance from past sins um, and attacks from the enemy. And she's also to, uh, asking to receive clarity in hearing the Lord's voice. Well, I keep saying, and I told her, um, you know, you hear the Lord's voice by spending time with the Lord. How do you spend time with the Lord? In prayer and in reading his, his word. So I also want to lift up Shannon S. Um, she's praying for salvation or return for her son to return to the Lord. Um, young man, very successful. He's become very, very successful and to the point where uh, the riches of this world have, have pulled him away from his first love, Jesus Christ. So I pray that the Lord will draw him back. Um, and also, I want to pray for your nation, whatever your nation is, whether you're in Canada, United States, and anywhere in Europe, in Asia, in South America, North America, Africa, wherever you are, um, just pray for your nation. I mean, um, every nation needs to be prayed for. And the Lord hears the words of his people who are praying for their nations. But I especially want to lift up a prayer for Israel, uh, everything that she's going through. And we read in scripture how all these things are foretold. Many of the things that Israel's going through right now um, will happen, and a lot more it's going to happen. So I want to pray that the Lord will strengthen the leaders of Israel, um, strengthen the people of Israel, and most of all that you know He would unite them. Because just as in my nation, there's huge separation in the United States. There's division among the people, and in, in Israel it seems to be even worse right now. So we want to lift them up. So with that, I'm going to go into prayer, and I especially want to pray for those who um, don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord. We thank you for uh, a blessed air in our lungs, Lord. We thank you for our blo uh, the blood in our veins. We thank you, Father, for the mighty hedge of protection that you place, not just around us, Lord, but around our homes and around our loved ones. We thank you for the many blessings that you pour upon us, Father, whether in our eyes the blessings are big or small, Lord, to you every blessing is the same, Lord. And I thank you, Father, for, for food on our table, clothes on our back. I thank you, Lord, for the little simple things that we in my country, the United States, so easily take for granted, Father. Things like electricity, running water, Lord, food on the table, Lord, just uh, a stove to cook our food upon, Lord, a shower to take a bath. And, and all these things, Lord, a bed with a, a pillow to lay our head upon, Lord, the things that many in this world don't have, Lord, we take for granted so easily. And we ask you, Lord, forgive us for taking these things for granted. And, and remind us that, Lord, there everything that we have is a blessing from you. Everything that we have comes from you and is yours, Lord. So 
I pray that you will give us, Lord, um, understanding and discernment on how to be good stewards of the things that you give us, Lord, and not not to hold on to everything that you give us, Lord, but to share with those who are in need, Father. So, I just lift lift all these um all these all these praises up to you, Father. We just thank you, Lord. I lift up all the prayer requests, Father. The ones that that I've mentioned that have been submitted to me, Father. We we just lift them up. Uh, place a mighty healing touch upon these people who have submitted them, Lord. And their loved ones, Lord, their loved ones that they're so concerned about, they're so worried about, Lord, that that their hearts are torn, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, teach them, teach them to to be patient with their loved ones, Lord, just as you are patient with us, Lord. And um, I especially want to lift up all those who don't know you, Lord Jesus. Um, you know, we as as a church, we call them the lost, but I don't call them the lost. I call them the asleep, Lord. So I pray, may your mighty hand be upon them, Lord. May you pull at the their hearts, Lord, may you rattle their minds, Lord, and just shake them, awaken them, Lord, awaken them to you and what you have done for them, Lord, and what you can continue to do for them, Lord. And I pray that if they do surrender their, their hearts to you, Lord, that you will surround them with godly men and women, Lord, my brothers and sisters out there who can lead them and guide them and, and help them, Lord, how to become stronger servants of you, Lord Jesus. And I just lift them on to you, Lord, and the rest of us, Lord, just be with us this day, Lord. Just watch over us and our loved ones, Lord, and just continue to open doors for us, Lord. Open doors for us to walk through, Lord. Doors that, that you want us to walk through, Lord. Uh, doors that will bring you praise, honor, and glory, and that we may always speak, Lord. And when people hear us speak your word, Lord, they hear you and not us, Lord. And I ask this, Lord Jesus, in your holy name, amen. God bless you, my friends, and I'll see you tomorrow.